Do you like to express yourself through the clothes you wear day to day? Do you feel like your style has a lot to say about you as a person? I know when I walk into every single classroom at El Centro, I see so many different types of outfits everywhere that I look. Everyone has their own style that they express themselves through the clothing that they wear. Today I would like to discuss why all schools should not require school uniforms. I will go into how they are costly, how they limit self-expression, and how they do not limit bullying or increase academic performance. According to the school's uniform organization, uniforms are traditionally favored by private institutions. School uniforms are being adopted by U.S. public schools in increasing numbers. Overall, about one in five U.S. public schools, which is 21%, require students to wear school uniforms. 25% of primary schools have student uniforms compared to 20% of middle schools and 12% of high schools. Mandatory uniform policies in public schools are more commonly found in cities as compared to suburban or rural areas. Many students rely on the clothing options they wear as a form of self-expression. The U.S. Constitution states in the First Amendment that all individuals have the right to express themselves freely. The U.S. Supreme Court stated in Tinker v. Des Moines Independent Community School District in 1969 that it can hardly be argued that either students or teachers shed their constitutional right to freedom of speech or expression at the schoolhouse gate. According to the school's uniform organization, uniforms take away the ability to use clothing as means of expression supports for social causes. Some may say school uniforms keep students focused on their education rather than their clothing options. While this may be a true statement in some cases, I don't feel that is as important as the cons that come with school uniforms, like promoting conformity or the costs that uniforms come with. According to the school uniforms organization, in schools where uniforms are specifically gendered, girls having to wear skirts and boys wearing pants, transgender, gender fluid, and gender non-conforming students can feel ostracized. Late satirist George Carlin asks, don't these schools do enough damage, making all these children think they are alike? Now they're going to get them to look alike too? Question mark. School uniforms can also not be afforded by everyone. David L. Brunsma, a PhD, stated that more affluent families buy more uniforms uniforms per child. The less affluent families, they have one to two pairs of uniforms. It is most likely to be tattered, torn, or faded. It only takes about two months for socioeconomic differences to show up again through the uniforms. If schools are requiring uniforms, they are taking away self-expression, they are promoting conformity, instead of individualization, and they are highlighting socioeconomic differences because of the uniforms being so costly. School uniforms restrict students' freedom of expression. School uniforms promote conformity over individuality. And school uniforms emphasize the socioeconomic differences that they're supposed to be eliminating. In conclusion, all students should not require all schools should not require students to wear uniforms because they can be costly, they limit self-expression, and they do not limit bullying or increase academic performance. Don't you want to be able to go into school and express yourself freely day every day? I know I do. Thanks for listening.